Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Listen, if you are not using Google Sheets, I'm here to tell you that you are missing out. I can't believe we're missing that. Google Sheets is essentially the Google equivalent of Microsoft Excel, so it's used to create spreadsheets, but it's completely free and there are so many different ways you can use it as a teacher. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through from start to finish every step of the way how to create a student checklist that can be used both digitally or printed using Google Sheets. Now, as we go through this tutorial, I am gonna show you a few tips and tricks along the way, but there are so many more hacks for Google Sheets, which will be coming in my next video. Also, if you're following these steps and you're like, Michelle, that's just too much for me, don't worry. I actually have a pre-made set of student checklists. You type in the student names on the roster one time and it automatically fills it on all the checklists. So I will link those for you down in the description box. Let's jump into it. We need to start by opening a new set of Google Sheets, which you can do a few different ways. Within Google Drive, you can come up to new and then click on Google Sheets, or you can go directly to your address bar, type in sheets.new, and it will open up a new blank spreadsheet. The first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and give it a title. We're gonna keep it pretty basic. I'm gonna click up here where it says untitled spreadsheet, and we're gonna call this student checklist but I also wanna rename the actual sheet. So within Google Sheets, just like in Google Slides, you can have different slides, you can have different sheets. Those are located down here at the bottom. In order to rename a sheet, you can either click the little arrow next to it and then select rename. You also can right click right on the sheet name in order to rename it. So we're just gonna call this basic checklist. <laughs> that works. Now I wanna go ahead and set my font and font alignment for the entire spreadsheet. I might still individualize it for some cells, but I like it to be all the same to start with. And I'm just not a huge fan of Arial. So in order to select every single cell on the spreadsheet, I can either click right up here. So the little square or rectangle in between A and one that will select the entire spreadsheet or on your keyboard, you can use Control A if you're using a PC or Command A if you are using a Mac. Now, my current favorite font, it does change sometimes, but currently I love Poppin, so I'm gonna select that. And let's go ahead and make it a size 12. I feel like that sounds good. And then I'm gonna come over here to the alignment and I want it to be aligned centered horizontally as well as vertically. So I'm gonna change that to middle, okay. Now I am ready to go and I can start actually creating my checklist. So starting in A1, I'm gonna type my title for this spreadsheet because I mentioned that I could print it as well. So this might say student checklist, again, keeping it basic. Now you will notice it's a little bit too big to fit in that cell the way that it's formatted right now but I'm gonna go ahead and merge. So I'm gonna click and drag in order to select all the way over to row L. And I'm gonna come up here to the merge button and I'm gonna click that. It's going to merge and center my text. I also wanna make this larger. So I'm gonna change it to size 24 and let's go ahead and bold it as well. I want the background to be black. So I'm gonna change the fill color to black but then change the font color to white. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, the reason I merged to column L is because I'm envisioning my checklist. I'm gonna have my students numbered in column A, their names in column B, and then I want 10 columns to be able to create checkboxes. So that's why I extended all the way to L. But I actually don't need the rest of these columns, so I'm gonna click column M and then I'm gonna just scroll all the way over to Z, but before I click Z, I'm gonna hold down Shift and then click it. So that selected everything from column M all the way over to column Z. Now I'm going to right click and I'm gonna choose Delete Columns M through Z. That way I'm just looking at the columns that I need. Okay. Now, I want to add some outlines to all of my cells. Obviously, if you're doing this digitally, you don't necessarily need those outlines, but because I want this checklist to be able to be used digitally as well as printed, 
I need some outlines. So I'm gonna come back and select all the cells by clicking in this rectangle. And I'm gonna come here to borders. And let's see, I can keep it at black, that looks good, but I'm gonna change the border style. Let's go with this medium thickness. And then I want to apply that to all borders. Okay, that looks pretty good. Obviously I could customize that as needed, but I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so my next row, which is row two, I'm envisioning this is where I'm gonna type those categories. So for example, like, week one homework or week one classwork. And because that's gonna be a little bit of a lengthier text, and I'm actually envisioning the text going up and down vertically instead of side to side, I need this row to be taller. You know how like typical grade books are set up where you have that tall section to write the categories? So what I'm gonna do is right click on this row and I'm gonna come down to resize row. And I could have it fit to data and as I type it would adjust but I've made enough of these that I know a pretty good row height is 125 pixels. So I'm gonna click okay, and you'll see that it lengthened it. The next thing I need to do is change my text orientation because I want the text to go up and down, but I already mentioned that my first column is going to be for my student numbers. B is gonna be for my student name. So I really only need this applied to C2 through L2. So I have click to select C2. I'm gonna hold down shift and click to select L2. So it selects everything in between. And I'm gonna come up here to the text rotation. And I want the text to start at the bottom and rotate up. So I'm gonna select this one right here. Now, if I put edit category title, you will notice that it is going the right direction, but it's getting cut off. So I'm going to reselect those same cells. So C2, through L2, and I'm gonna change the text wrapping as well. So I'm gonna click the drop down, and I want this one with the curved arrow that's going to wrap my text. So it's gonna make it go onto multiple lines. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this cell. So I'm just selecting it, copy, and then I'm gonna click and drag, or I could use shift to highlight all the other ones. And I'm gonna paste, I'm using my keyboard shortcut, which is Command V or Control V if you are using a PC. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that for now and I wanna add in those student numbers. So I'm gonna come over here to column A and I'm just gonna type one, two, three. I could keep typing the numbers, but a much faster way is to actually use this little blue uh, square that's down in the corner if you see that. I'm gonna click and drag in order to highlight those three. Google Sheets is able to identify my pattern, which is I'm just counting sequentially. So if I click and drag down as far as I need, so let's go to like 32, that'll give me 30. It's going to automatically continue numbering for me. I am officially streamlining the efficiency of this corporation. Now I'm going to bold these and I want to make this thinner. Now I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it that looks pretty good. I don't need it to be like too, too long. Okay, so I now no longer need the rest of these rows. Of course I could keep them in case I got additional students, but I'm going to select row 33 and I'm gonna scroll all the way down because it gives me a lot of rows all the way to a thousand. Hold down shift, click a thousand that has selected all of them. I'm going to right click and delete. That way I only have the rows that I need. Okay, next I'm gonna start typing my student names. Now we're just gonna do this as an example. So let's do Michael Scott from The Office. Let's do Dwight Schrute. Let's do Jim Halpert. These people are the best of the best. Okay, that's pretty good. I do need to resize this column as well. So I'm going to right click on V, choose resize column, and let's make this 200. That should give me plenty of room. And I'm gonna actually left align this column so that they line up on the left side. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty good for now. But the next thing I wanna do is add alternating colors. So I only need from two all the way down to 32 so that I have all of those rows. And I'm gonna come up to format and choose alternating colors. 
This is going to make it so that it goes back and forth between like white and gray. So it's easier to differentiate my rows. I do have a header, but I want the header to stay white. Then color one, I want to be this gray right here, like gray one. And then color two, we're gonna make white as well. So now you will notice if I click done, I have all of those rows already colored instead of trying to do it individually. And if I add more rows, so for example, let's add like four more rows, click add, it's gonna keep those alternating colors as well. So I'm gonna undo because I don't need those. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna add in my check boxes. So I want to add check boxes from cells C3 all the way over to L3, but also all the way down to L32. So I'm gonna come to the very last cell, like the opposite corner, if you will, hold down shift and select. So now all of those boxes where I want the check boxes to go are selected. I'm gonna come up to insert and I'm gonna choose checkbox. So now I actually have a clickable checkbox in all of those cells, but it's a dark gray, which is not okay. <laughs> so I wanna change that to black. So it is recolored. That looks pretty good. Now there's a few different ways I can use these checkboxes. I can just simply click to check them and click again to uncheck them. Or if that cell is selected, so it has the blue outline, I can use space on my keyboard to select it or unselect it. I also can select multiple cells and once again, use spacebar to select them all at once or unselect them all at once. So I am noticing these columns from C through L, they're, they're a little chunky, they're a little big. We're gonna just shrink them down. I'm just kind of clicking and dragging right in between. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so my checklist is ready to go to be used digitally. Obviously you would fill in all of the student names and you would fill in those category titles or you can leave them blank. So if I'm wanting to print just like a blank checklist, I might select all of these and click backspace or delete on my keyboard so that that way I could hand write them in. But it's looking good. I'm gonna come up to print it. So I'm gonna come up here to the toolbar, click print. And it's gonna give me a preview of what it looks like. And right now it's going on to two pages. It's also landscape. I don't know if I want landscape, let's see. I could fit it to height. So that's going to shrink it so that it stays on the height of one page. But mm, let me see what portrait looks like. Okay, portrait, but let's do fit to width. I could also choose fit to page. That works, that looks better, I think, but I'm not liking how these two cells are like split. Instead, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna select both of these cells by clicking and dragging, and I'm gonna merge them. And I might even type like notes, and let's like align that in the top left corner like that. Okay, now if I go to print, I almost have like a little spot where I could jot down notes. That looks pretty good. I mean, if I wanted to make it fill the page a little bit more, maybe instead of having 10 columns, I could only have five. So if I select from H to L, I can right click and actually hide the columns. So they're still there, okay? I can get them back by just clicking that little arrow, but they're out of view for right now. So if I go to print, now it's, oh, I gotta change it. Hold on, fit page. It's filling the space a little bit more. I can even change my margins to narrow. Yeah, that didn't change much. I literally play around with this, okay? Because I feel like it's different every time. So from here, I can just print it and then I can use those check boxes with paper and pencil and check them off. But I also can use it digitally by clicking the check boxes. And the great thing is once you have this set up once, I'm gonna unhide those columns. I can now just duplicate this sheet and reuse it. So I'm gonna come down here to the sheet right click, choose duplicate. It's gonna make an exact copy of that checklist. And now I could go in and just change the heading. So maybe I'm using this to check off homework or assignments turned in. I could just retitle those, whatever I need for that marking period or that month or that unit. And I'm able to reuse this again and again. Now, just to give you some ideas of ways that you could use this, this is that set of editable student checklists I mentioned at the beginning that you can grab from my TPT store where it's already formatted and ready to go. Once you type in the student names on the roster here, it will automatically populate onto all the other checklists. This is that basic student checklist we just created that you can either use digitally or print, but you also could use 
a like double checklist. So my vision for this, I'm gonna go ahead to print so you can see what it would look like. Let's make it portrait. Is you would print it on one page, but it has two checklists. So then you can cut it apart and you can use this to track like assignments turned in and you just binder clip it to a stack of papers. And then you could have the score right on there. So it's easier to enter grades in the grade book. But you also could use it to check off those beginning of the year forms. And mine actually has it set where you can highlight missing checklist items. So that way you can see who's missing it and you can toggle that on and off very easily. You could use it as a work completion checklist. And mine even has this automatic like missing assignment list that generates. So student names that have not been checked off will appear under each of the categories. But I mentioned using it for like a homework checklist. You can use it for those weekly tasks or even field trips. So you can have it generate where if a student is not attending, it will turn them red and kind of cross them out. So you don't worry about them missing other assignments. So once again, if you are interested in this set of pre-made checklists, I will have that linked for you in the description box. But otherwise, I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you. Remember, you can always change the playback speed of YouTube videos. So if I went too fast for you, you can slow it down. I can take it slow. You can pause along the way, go back, rewatch. That's the wonderful thing about YouTube. But if it was helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, share it out with your teacher friends, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.